Hey everyone, this is Trident to Live here with another video tutorial. This one is a little more sciencey. I was noticing on one of my trips to the Mun and back that it took me a whopping 44 tanks to get out to the Mun, but only half a tank to get back to the planet Kerbin. Why does it take so much to go one way, but so little to get back? We are starting to get into the subject of delta V, which sounds a bit complicated, but it isn't. First of all, the V stands for velocity, uh, the speed at which something travels, and the delta part merely refers to the change of that velocity. It's the change of speed, or how much a rocket can speed up or slow down. If a rocket has a delta V of 1,000 meters per second, that means it's able to go from zero to 1,000 meters per second before it runs out of fuel. Now it's not always as straightforward as that. There are different forces that cause the exact same rocket to have a higher or lower effective delta V depending on where it is or what it's pushing. And this is the key difference between the fuel requirements of our mission. One of the first things to talk about is inertia. Inertia basically means that any object wants to keep doing what it's doing. For example, when you're sliding on ice, you seem to keep going forever, even if you want to stop. You have inertia. Imagine that you're trying to roll a huge boulder. It doesn't want to move because it has inertia. Things will either stay put or keep going the same speed unless something else puts a force on it. The reason why a car can't coast forever is because friction keeps slowing it down. Friction is a force that eventually overcomes the car's inertia. So what does this all have to do with our rockets? Well, the more mass something has, the more inertia it contains. After all, would you rather push a small car or a semi-truck? My starting rocket has a lot of mass, so it has more inertia than my return rocket. This means that it takes more fuel to push it, even if there wasn't any gravity. My oversized rocket has a much less efficient delta V. Now let's get into the gravity of the situation. Get it? Gravity? Uh, well, anyway, gravity is the attractive force that any object of mass has. You actually have your own gravitational field. It's not detectable because the force of gravity is proportional to mass. You need something really big to have a noticeable effect of gravity. Something like a planet, or a moon, or your mom. Uh. This explains one important reason why it's easier to take off from the Mun than Kerbin. The Mun has less mass and therefore less gravity. There is less pulling you down. Nice. One thing you might also notice is that orbits that are farther away from Kerbin are slower than the ones that are closer. This is because the farther you are from an object, the less force its gravity exerts on you. The last thing in this mix is air resistance or drag. Drag is the reason why you can't orbit below 30 kilometers and any orbit below 70 kilometers will eventually decay. If you've ever watched your speed as you free fall back to curb and you'll notice that you start to slow down. Drag may seem straightforward, but it's actually one of the more complicated forces. You see, whereas gravity only changes by your distance from the planet Kerbin, and inertia only changes with the size of your rocket, Drag changes upon three separate factors. It's also one of the biggest limiting factors on the early stages of rockets. The first factor that determines the force of drag is the density of the air. The more air, the more drag. And since there's more air at sea level, there is more drag. When you're in space, there's no air and the drag is no longer an issue. The MUN doesn't have air either, so we don't have to fight against that when we're up there. The second factor is more familiar the aerodynamic design of the rocket. This is why fast cars are shaped like a knife and cheap cars look like this. I don't even know how your mom fits in that thing. In KSP, making a rocket aerodynamic doesn't do anything extra. This is because each part has its own drag rating. The game then adds those numbers together and that's the total drag of your rocket. The density of the air and the design of the ship work together and are called the drag coefficient. They are hard to separate from each other. Now the final factor that determines the force of drag is your speed. The faster you go, the more drag you will have. And it's not a one-to-one -one ratio either. Nope, every time you double your speed, you quadruple the force of drag. 
let's put it this way. Say you're traveling at 50 meters per second and your coefficient at that speed causes a drag of 10 meters per second per second. Meaning you will slow down by 10 meters every second. At 100 meters per second, you'll be slowed down by 40 meters per second per second. The faster you go, the more drag slows you down. And if the force of your rocket engines isn't greater than the force of that drag, you won't go any faster. You'll just keep pushing up against a wall of air until it gets thinner or your rocket becomes more aerodynamic. This means that my huge, oversized rocket has to start out with the most inertia, the most gravity, and the most drag of the entire trip. This requires more rockets and more fuel to get enough delta V to get to the MUN. This is why my rocket takes 88 times more fuel to get to the MUN than to get back. Man, I like science and video games.